Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today we're going to be reinstalling the piston and cylinder assembly on our 2003 Honda Rancher. It's going to be pretty simple to do. I'm going to show you how to get the rings oriented on it uh, properly, get the, uh, the piston mounted back on the connector rod, and get that cylinder back on. So if you're ready, I'll go break my tools back out and show you how to get it done. All right guys, before we dive into this, this is gonna be a skill level two, but you really need to pay attention to what you're doing. Now, as far as the tools, just to take it this far, you need a good gasket scraper, and then just a small flat blade screwdriver. That's really about it. Now, if you would, reference our exploded diagrams. This is gonna give you a real clear picture how all this is gonna go back together. So, once you've got your parts on order and you've got those ready to go and the tools that you need, come back here and I'll show you how to get it done. All right, let's start by preparing our piston. First thing I want to do is go ahead and get the circlip that's facing forward in there. So the trick is here, you do not want the end gap to end up where this little cutout is. You want it to actually be facing up. So I usually put the top left in and then with just my fingernails, work it around. And that last little section to get it to snap in, you can use a screwdriver to rotate it around and push it in carefully do not want to scratch that inner bore. When it actually goes in, you'll hear it snap. There we go. And she is seated all the way around now, and that's what we're after. All right, as you can see in the drawing, you're gonna have your O-ring split on either side of this where it says in, and then 120 degrees out, you're gonna have the, uh, the second ring and then your compression ring. So they'll end up being here, here, and then centered here, and then split on either side, with the oil rings being roughly an inch away from each other. The oil rings actually made of three different rings. You've got a top and a bottom, and then you've got this corrugated looking ring that actually goes in between them. So we're gonna pop it in first. And what you wanna make sure of is that the ends don't overlap and they actually butt up next to each other. So that's what you're gonna see. We can go ahead and take one of the oil rings and we wanna start it about an inch over from where that junction is. These kind of spiral on without getting in trouble. Now we've got the bottom one on and we're gonna go an inch the other direction and get that one on, just like that. The real trick is there, you don't wanna pull them out too far, otherwise that'll deform them and then they're not gonna seat correctly. All right, so we've got our bottom ring set up. Next, let's go ahead and put on our, uh, our scraper ring, is what I usually call it, and then we'll put our compression ring at the very top, another 120 degrees that way. All right, these actually may have a mark on the top side, so that's the area you want to be facing up. When you're doing this, you want to open them up just as little as possible to get them to seat on there. There we go. And then the next one, the gap will be over on this side. And once again, it actually has some printing on the top that needs to be facing up. Actually, it says R and then 5O. That 5O signifies that this is a two over, so a half millimeter bore is what we ended up doing. There she is. All right, now I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil on our wrist pin, and then let's put a little bit in here on the piston itself. Now we can just get it started. Let's walk it on over to the machine. All right, notice that I still have a, a rag down around the connector rod because when we put that other piston clip in, it's gonna be very important that this uh, cloth be down here because if I missed and it sprung off, we do not want it to drop into the bottom of our engine. So be careful, make sure you've got that thing blocked off the best you can. All right, now it's bottomed out against that other circlip. We can go ahead and grab our other clip and get it put in there. Same scenario, we want the clip facing up. And there she goes. It's a satisfying click when it actually pops in there. All right, before we put the cylinder on, we want to put a little bit of oil on the rings all the way around. Go ahead and get some down on the skirt of the piston as well on both sides. Recheck your rings to make sure they're, the gaps are where they're supposed to be. Now let's go ahead and get our dowels in place. I've still got the rags under it just to make sure I don't drop anything down there. All right, now let's go ahead and lay our gasket in. Make sure you have the two larger holes that go back so it'll clear. Now we can go and remove our uh, shop rags. Check our end gaps one more time. Everything looks good. All right, I think we're ready to get the cylinder on there now. 
All right, we got it cleaned up. I went and sprayed it down with contact cleaner just to make sure there's no debris anywhere or any dust or dirt inside of the cylinder. And with this particular cylinder, you don't use a set of uh, ring compressors because it actually has an angled or chamfered edge on the bottom side of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up there, start to lower it down and just feed each ring one by one with our fingers to get it to go on. Make sure she's centered and square. And let's start pushing those rings in. This is where you have to be patient, be very careful. You do not want to bend one of these rings, potentially break it and then scar your piston and or the cylinder. And she's down. All right, next thing I want to do is go ahead and bring it up to top dead center. Because when I pushed it down, it actually went down into the lower stroke of the crank. When you bring it around, you just want to pull this ever so slowly to bring it up on the, uh, the top dead center mark right here. It's that T. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up this portion of the project. So if you would, go on and check out our video on how to prep the head and then get it reinstalled. So if you need any of the parts thus far, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.